The first rule on investment is don't lose. And the second rule on investment is don't forget the first rule. And that's all the rules there are. I mean, that uh, if you buy things for far below what they're worth and you buy a group of them, you basically don't lose money. I said, investing is just about assigning yourself the right story. I said, imagine Ben Bradley this morning said to you, what is the Washington Post company worth? What would you do if you have to write the story in a month? You'd go out and interview TV brokers and newspaper brokers and owners, and you'd try and value each asset. I said, that's what I do. I assign myself the right story. And it's nothing more than that. Now, there's some stories I can't write. If you ask me to write a story on, you know, what is some glamorous nonprofit making business worth? I don't know how to write that story. But if you ask me to write a story on what is Potomac Electric Power worth or something, like that. I, I can write the story, and that's what I'm doing every day. And at Berkshire Hathaway, we have all kinds of businesses. We own 73 businesses now, and in, in businesses, we're looking for an entity that has durable competitive advantage, somebody that not only is doing well now, but will do well 10 or 20 years from now. And in capitalism, when you have a wonderful business, it's like having an economic castle, and the nature of capitalism is that people want to come in and take your castle. It's perfectly understandable. I mean, if I'm selling television sets or something, there's going to be 10 other people that are going to try and sell a better television set. If I have a restaurant here in Omaha, people are going to try and copy my menu and give more parking and take my chef and so on. So capitalism's all about somebody coming and trying to take the castle. Now what you need is you need a castle that has some durable competitive advantage, some castle that has a moat around it. And that moat, best, one of the best moats in many respects is to be a low cost producer. But sometimes the moat is just having more talent. I mean, if you're the heavyweight champion of the world and you keep knocking out people, you've got a competitive advantage as long as you can keep doing it. And it's very profitable uh, if you're the one that happens to be able to do it. If you can turn out great motion pictures, I mean, you know, Steven Spielberg, I mean, and he, he's a fellow to bet on, and, and it has enormous economic value. Well, we're looking for that institutionalized. We're not looking for the best brain surgeon in town. We're looking for the Mayo Clinic. So we want an institution that, regardless of the person in charge, will maintain that competitive advantage over the decades. And we hope we find that in some businesses, and then we try to get the best person that we can to run them. Usually it's the person who's been running them. You don't need tons of IQ in this business. I mean, you have to have enough IQ to get from here to downtown Omaha, but uh, you do not have to be able to play three-dimensional chess or, or be in the top leagues in terms of bridge playing or something of the sort. Uh, you need a stable personality. You need a temperament that neither derives great pleasure from being with the crowd or against the crowd, because this is not a business where you take polls. It's a business where you think. And Ben Graham would say that you're not right or wrong because a thousand people agree with you, and you're not right or wrong because a thousand people disagree with you. You're right because your facts and your reasoning are right. We bought our Coca-Cola, for example, in 1988 and 89 on this stock at a price of $11 a share. As low as nine, as high as 13, but it averaged about $11. And it'll earn, we'll say, most estimates are between 230 and 240 this year. So it's under five times this year's earnings, but it was a pretty good sized multiple back when we bought it. It's, it's the future that counts. It's like what I wrote there, what Wayne Gretzky says to go where the puck is going to be, not where it is. So the current multiple interacts with the reinvestment of capital capital and the rate at which that capital is invested to determine the attractiveness of something now. And uh, we are affected in that valuation process to a considerable degree by interest rates, but not by whether they're 7.3 or 7.0 or 7.5. But I mean, we'll be thinking much differently if their long-term rates are 11% or 5%. And, uh, but we don't have any magic multiples in mind. We're thinking we want to be in the business that 10 years from now is earning a whole lot more money than it is now, and that we will still feel good about the prospects of the business at that time. That's the kind of business we're trying to buy all of, and that's the kind of business that we try and buy part of.